6268. R&D Tactical Solutions, Ocala's Indoor Gun Range. Call 622-7468. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before... 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You and I have the uh, amazing privilege of being able to speak to authors and uh, have intimate 25-minute in, uh, conversations with them, Robin. It's just it's just a real privilege for us. And in, in the course of having done this since, I don't know, what have we been doing this, 20 years or so? Yes. Um, we, we've spoken to authors who are well-established and are already household names, and I've spoken to a few authors who only had a manuscript and didn't even have a published book, although I discouraged that since, you know, I, I learned early on, so so that example would be early on in doing that, because I, I learned that the listeners really want to read the book, and if you have a really well-written manuscript, you really should publish it. Of course, you know, in today's world, you can self-publish, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good book, but but at least people, people can get to it, and... Um, Anyway, it's, it's been a real privilege. So one of the stories I remember from those days when I would say, oh, you got a manuscript. All right, I'll read the manuscript and then we'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do that anymore. I, I prefer that there's a book. Because for the listener's sake, I want them to be able to uh, to get it. But I, I, I do remember one young lady came in and she had a manuscript and we talked to her on the air. And then she came in maybe a year, maybe even two years later, and she was showing me the book and... And now she writes for Harlequin, right? Harlequin yes, is, yes, she is does. the publisher. Harlequin, yeah. So it is. It is kind of a cool thing to see somebody progress. There are so many different ways that somebody who wants to be a writer can become a writer. One of my favorite ones, especially if it's science fiction, is the um, the Writers of the Future Awards uh, competition. The L. Ron Hubbard Writers of the Future. We've met quite a few of them, not just writers, but we've met artists as well because of that competition. Uh, our next guest has a couple of different names. He's got the name Dave Wolverton, who's on the phone with us right now. Uh, Dave Wolverton is a New York Times bestselling science fiction author. He's also David Farland. Did you know that? Yes. He's a New York Times bestselling fantasy author. I had to read it a few times before I figured it out. One is fantasy, one is science fiction. Mm -hmm. Hmm, wonder which one is more fun. <laughs> uh, Dave Wolverton is also an award-winning, uh, let's see, what does it say here? Oh, a video game designer, a mentor, and the L. Ron Hubbard Writers of the Future Awards coordinating judge. That's pretty cool. So, th with that said, all of you writer wannabes are... Um, just take note of this, and I've said this every time we've spoken to somebody from the L. Ron Hubbard thing, that this is not a competition you pay to enter, which means that there's going to be lots of competition, but you don't. But it's, nobody's making money off of this unless, of course, there's a book published, and then they make money from the, from the good work that is being done by the authors. Dave Wolverton. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Where are you? I'm in uh, I'm in St. George, Utah, which is just a tiny town on the very southern tip of Utah. Wow. How did you become a judge? Well, you know, um, years ago, uh, in volume number three, I was the grand prize winner for the, uh, for the competition. And shortly after winning the competition, I got a three-novel contract with Bantam Books. My first book came out uh, on my way to paradise and won the Philip K. Dick Memorial Special Award as one of the best novels of the year and um, that is awesome and shortly afterward i was invited to be a judge uh, i had studied to be an editor and uh and this kind of thing and um and so uh you know by 1992 i was asked to be the coordinating judge i did that for a number of years and then went off to hollywood to work for a bit and uh i just recently came back and i've been the coordinating judge for the last uh three and a half years now Robert and I, um, like I mentioned, we, we read a lot of books because of this job. Um, we went to dinner the other day for my son's birthday, and, yes. and the people we were with were asking us, you know, are you speed readers? How do you read so much? And I am not a speed reader. Me neither. Is not, Robin is not a speed reader. And are you? I mean, and, and I've often thought if I was a speed reader, I would lose a lot. I don't know if that's true or not, but how, do you be, how can you be a judge in a book? You've got to be able to 
read and read. I mean, you must reading must be a real skill for you. Well, I I do uh, I, I actually do speed read, but only when I'm doing research. Um, and, and I can read about two thousand words a minute uh, when I'm doing research. But um, but to to savor and enjoy a story, uh, I don't think that you should speed read. I think that it it takes uh, it takes the characters' voices out of it. And for me, I have to read about the speed that I talk, um, and I have to concentrate and focus on every word to decide whether or not they're using the right words in their sentence, or are they wasting space, or you know this kind of thing. So I can't read when I'm reading uh, when I'm reading them. But what I can do is I can look at it very closely. I look at the opening of a story, and I can tell really quickly um, just kind of what level the author is at. Um, and, and you can have a good author, somebody who writes well, uh, who isn't a great storyteller. And so mm. I'm looking for people who are great storytellers and uh, fine stylists. And when I find a person like that and have a, have a story that has some unique and original ideas to it, then I've got that sort of golden trio that I look for, and I only get maybe, oh, just a small percentage of my stories, less than less than 10% of them uh, fit into a category where I have to read further, uh, about 3% of them um, I will go through and say, okay, in the first two pages you've probably disqualified yourself, so even though I read a lot of stories, I don't read them all all the way through. <laughs> oh, I see, so, so yeah. okay, so... Um I have been in the room with people who were judging songs, mm -hmm. and I have seen them turn off the song like three or four measures into it. So it must be the same sort of thing. You, 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 if it doesn't get you in the beginning, then you're not going to even bother listening to the rest, or in your case, that's, reading the rest. That's right. You can't recover from a bad opening, uh, in my opinion. I mean, you, you can recover but not in a short story competition because the other judges are going to look at it and they're going to say, oh, this opening stinks. You know, why is it in here? And, uh, and so they're going to disqualify it. For, oh, wow. Well, so does, does that information get passed on to the, to the author? Uh, you know, th we, we do let them know. I, I send out a newsletter, a uh, free newsletter on a regular basis. Uh, people can go to my site at www.mystorydoctor.com and register for it. And so um, I think most of the people who are, uh, who are going in here, an awful lot of them uh, get my newsletter. And so they kind of learn what the standards are. In fact, I've got a, some articles that I've written on how I judge a story so that they know really quickly what it is they're up against. But this is the way that all editors judge stories. You know, if, you've, uh, if you start to reading a book and you go, oh, I'm bored, or my eyes, I can't keep them open, or... Uh, this is stupid, or I don't believe this. There are certain questions that, uh, things that come up, and if you feel certain ways about a story, you're going to have to say, okay, I don't want to read all the way through, even though it might get better later on. Hmm. It seems like uh, having a person of your caliber in a uh, uh, writer's group is extremely beneficial. Do you like the writer's group, like we have a few writer's groups here in our community, but they don't have people of your caliber in the group, but still they share suggestions and uh, themes and whatever else it is they share. Do you think that's beneficial to be in one of those writer groups as opposed to a group that someone you're in has? Well, yeah, I think, I think it's helpful to be in, in any writing group, to be honest. Um, I don't belong to a writing group now. I've sort of kind of gotten beyond that. Um, I guess I am my own writing group. Uh, but, I would think so. <laughs> uh, but I think that uh, the, the problem is is I read so much. Um, I work uh, as a writer and an editor and as a contest judge and stuff like that. So that if I'm in a writing group, I just, I just can't afford to take the time to spend, a, let's say, um, you know, six, seven hours a week uh, in a writing group. Uh, and even though I love the idea, it's, it's just not possible. So I, I think that it's great to get feedback in one way or another. And, you know, there, there's a number of ways to get it. Some people um, join writing groups, but I know a number of professionals, um, uh, uh, particularly people who are in businesses where they make uh, a lot of money who, who just send things out to professional editors and, and let editors look at their work. And that's worthwhile, too, if you've got that kind of money. But it, it is an expensive prospect. Dave, prospect. we have to take a little break. But for the listeners who are all ears right now, because you're a writer and you want to know how to become a better writer, on the other side of the break, 
Dave is going to tell you about a workshop. And uh, the fact that it's in Hollywood, California, don't let that scare you. Let me tell you, uh, the, the investment of an airplane ticket is worth it for your career. We'll be right back with Dave Wolverton. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Intervals of clouds and sunshine. Watch out for a thunderstorm this afternoon and this evening. Today's high 88 to 92. Later tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 72 to 76. Tomorrow, sunshine mixing with clouds. An afternoon or evening, thunderstorm around high 88 to 92. And on Wednesday, partly sunny with a chance of an afternoon thunderstorm high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. We are located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. I'd like to invite you to stop by and see our new boutique area and meet our staff of professional stylists. Here at Hello Gorgeous, we are ready to update your look with the latest trends. It's the perfect time to brighten up your look. So make your appointment now for those highlights and Brazilian blowout. But don't stop there. We are a full service salon offering manicures, pedicures, and facials also. So if you've been searching for a salon to call your own, come and see us at Hello Gorgeous Salon. We are located at 48 South Magnolia Avenue in downtown Ocala, right next to the Marion Theater. So call today and set up your appointment at Hello Gorgeous Salon at 351-5358. That's 351-5358. And don't forget, we also do men and children's cuts too. 351-5358. Hello Gorgeous. Come join New Mail Medical for their town hall at Golden Corral in the Villages on Wedgwood Lane, Tuesday, July 21st and Wednesday, July 22nd from 4 to 6 p.m. Join renowned expert Dr. Christopher Asandra and get your questions answered. He will be discussing the importance of hormonal replacements and common misconceptions for men and women, as well as the importance of sexual health and anti-aging. Now, dinner and refreshments will be provided for those in attendance, along with door raffles and giveaways. But seating is limited, so please call today to reserve your space at the Golden Corral in the Villages on Wedgwood Lane. Call today, 404-4779. That's 404-4779. One more time, 404-4779. And make plans to join New Mail Medical. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, Yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we we do that. I need my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new truck. Yep, we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. All right, 12 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Dave Wolverton is on the phone with us. He's an award-winning author. He uh, writes fantasy. He writes science fiction. And he he does have another name. Let's see. Dave uh, David Farland is his other name. Uh, And there's a a workshop. I want to make sure that our listeners know about the workshop because this is out in in L.A., in Hollywood specifically. Um, And the ticket from Orlando, I just looked it up. I couldn't remember what it would cost. But the lowest price I could find was $350. Mm-hmm. 350 not bad from wow. from Orlando to LA yeah. and then uh, I think the highest one I see is $609 it it's an investment in yourself if you want to um really pursue your dream of becoming a, an author specifically a science fiction author am i right dave this is for science fiction authors uh yeah science fiction fantasy horror actually the principles that we teach work with any kind of story. So if you want to write mainstream stories or, you know, if, uh, if you're uh, into something like writing romance or, you know, it, it works for anything. The workshop um, is August 29th and August 30th. So it's a two-day workshop mm-hmm. in Hollywood. Is it is it at the, your place near the uh, Chinese Theater? Yes. It's going to be at Author Services, which is just right on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, over the course of the workshop, we're going to be talking about a number of things, but basically how do you come up with ideas for stories? How do you then formulate and write the stories? And uh, 
basically tips on how to lead a, a productive life as a writer because, you know, quite frankly, your success as a writer is tied to your productivity to some to some degree. In other words, you can't write a book every 15 years and generally make a living on it. Um, you've you've got to be putting putting out work on a fairly regular basis. Right. How, how do you keep, uh, how do you tell the writer to keep themselves motivated? Because sometimes it just seems like such an overwhelming task. They'll just give up. You know, I think there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, one thing you can do is, is you know, people make nice comments to you. If you get a nice piece of fan mail or something like that, or people in your writing group say good things, um, that serves as fuel to help keep you going. And, and I think you need to pay attention to that. You know, the problem with the new writer is we often don't have uh, any, when you're starting out, you don't have anybody who's rooting for you. You know, you may have a a spouse or parents who are saying, oh, gosh, you know, don't do that. You can't make a living. And, and the truth is you can make a great living as a writer, but it requires an investment of time and uh, patience, and you've got to learn the craft a bit before you can before you can go out and do that. And, and, and I'm guessing you can't learn it on your own. You have to have feedback. Yeah, you've got to get feedback. You know, basically you, you, you get information on how to do it. You practice and then you get feedback on, on the things that you practice, and it's a process that you keep going through as you, as you grow. Is I've trained um, dozens, hundreds of writers. Um, dozens of them are number one New York Times bestsellers, people like Brandon Sanderson and Brandon Mull, uh, all number one New York Times bestsellers, along with Stephanie Meyer and, and others. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of people when they start out, they just can't see themselves getting up to those heights. But as a, as a teacher, I can look at it and sort of peg, okay, where are you on the scale? Where, where, where are you at? Where are you going? Right, right, right. And, uh, and I think you need that kind of a, a perspective. Does the uh, workshop have a cost? Um, it does. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's about uh, $589, if I remember correctly. Okay. I couldn't find it on the website. I went to writersofthefuture.com, and I, d I just... This one says 389. Oh, three. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So Robin has it. I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, what, what What is your opinion about ghost writers? I think they're you know they they shortchange themselves if only one person's name appears on the front of the book. Shouldn't it be like a name and then with and then that's the person that really does the writing? Well, you know, the, the truth is is that there are a lot of people for good reasons who don't want to have um, uh, the, the real writer's name on it. For example, we're coming up on the political season, and you'll see a lot of books by politicians. None of them were actually written by any of the politicians. They're almost always written by a ghostwriter. And, and these are people who have learned the craft and learned it well, and they get paid a certain percentage for it. And, uh, and they know that what they're doing is they're, they're hooking up with somebody who has a name, and uh, and that name is going to drive so many sales that uh, that they probably would have a hard time building a career, you know, that would that would allow them to make the same kind of money that they would do as a ghostwriter. So, for example, if you get 25% of the proceeds from a uh, a big politician who's selling a couple million copies, you know, that that works really well. The same kind of thing happened with uh, R. L. Stein's books. He he was able to go out and get several writers to work for him, and he oh. uh, edited them and helped design them and things like that. But he's more of a, a book marketer than just, you know. I didn't know that. He I didn't, didn't write those. I didn't know that. Wow. wow. He, wrote, he probably wrote some of them. He's, he's a good writer in, in his own right, that's for sure. And, and he had a great plan and uh, was hitting his market just right. So My son used to love his books. He, he, he would read one book. On, all, it took us about a half hour to get to school. Yeah. He'd read half of it on the way to school, the other half on the way. That's how fast he could read. Mm -hmm. He was a yes. good reader. At nine years old, he was doing this. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. They were huge. Uh, he took up 45% of all the market for middle grade books, put, put about 5,000 writers out of business. And now there's a movie coming yeah. out, too, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. How exciting is that, or is it not? We've had, like I mentioned in the beginning, we've spoken to many, many authors, and whenever I ask about a movie, some of them groan. I'd never want another movie made because they had a bad experience. Or like if they've never had it, they say from your mouth to God's ears, <laughs> they, they yeah. want it. They want it really bad. What is your thought? I mean, you're you're the more seasoned author here. What is your thought about that? Yeah, well, you know, the truth is, um, I, I've got a couple of offers on the table, and um, you know, as soon as uh, uh, as soon as you get one and you start looking at it, you go, hey, this looks like a serious offer. Offer, they're going to pay me a bunch of money, and 
you know, uh, yeah, you can't help but get excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine. Even after, even after you've been burned a couple of times, and I've been burned, uh, I've been burned so much. My wife has said, "Dave, don't you ever do another movie?" And uh, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, uh, then all of a sudden you get some offers and things like they're turning around, look like they're turning around, and eventually, I think, you know, yeah, one of these is going to go. It's going to be made into a big film and. You know, with any luck, it's going to be a blockbuster. Uh, what do all of the uh, uh, writers have in common that's going to be on the panel with you? Um, all of the authors that are going to be there are uh, number one New York Times bestsellers, and so we're going. I'll be doing most of the teaching, but we're going to have Orson Scott Card, who did Ender's Game, um, which uh, was made into a movie what, last year, about a year and a half ago. Um, and we're going to have uh, Kevin J. Anderson and uh, his wife, Rebecca Moesta. And uh, Kevin has done over 115 New York Times bestselling novels, I believe, at this point, uh, coming up about on his 150th book. He's probably the best-selling, uh, the biggest moneymaker in the science fiction business. Um, We've had so him on. He's a wonderful <laughs> fellow. Yeah, he is. He is. And so, uh, so they're all great. I think getting advice from people who actually know how to sell books is important. Most of the time we get advice when we're new authors. We get it from our, our friends in our writing group or, and stuff like that. And a lot of times bad information gets spread. So we try to do the best we can to get the very best information out there. Do you know what's interesting? It, there are book people and there are movie people and music people and sports people and book people get what Robin and I do here with the authors. I mean, we speak to everybody. We speak to politicians and mm -hmm. sports people and we speak to everybody. But we almost on a daily basis, and this is no exaggeration, have a New York Times bestselling author. And at one time somebody said to us, it must be easy to get on the New York Times bestselling list because you have them every day. And I said, are you kidding me? It's not easy. That, I mean, that's a real feather in your hat. That's a yeah. real accomplishment. But somebody who's not a book person every day hears us. I mean, we're, we're admittedly a small show. We're not a big radio show. So the fact that we get all these New York Times bestselling authors is like, well, if you guys can get them, they must be easy to, to get. Yeah, but it's not, not. It's it's not. not it's not easy to get on, onto that list. When when did you first hit the New York Times list? Oh gosh, you know, I I did it kind of uh, by chance when I I was asked to write a novel called Star Wars: The Courtship of Princess Leia, and um, <laughs> of course, uh, when you do a Star Wars novel, especially back then, you know, it was uh, it was like the fourth or fifth uh, Star Wars novel to come out when the franchise was created, and uh, that one just went through the roof. Um, and uh, so that put me on the New York Times bestseller list. And then, of course, I did a science fiction novel. I did uh, one that uh, I won the, I uh, uh, actually got a, a Guinness World Record for the world's largest book signing with a book called the Very Stra A Very Strange Trip that was based on an L. Ron Hubbard screenplay. And then I hit it myself with my novel, Wizardborn, in uh, my Rune Lords fantasy series. And I also did it a couple of other times with some uh, Star Wars uh, middle grade books that I did. Robin's son, when he was younger, he used to read all the Star Wars books. Yeah. Was, was, yeah, he did. Was Dave's name on the cover, do you remember? Uh, Ke Kevin's was. Yep. The, uh, yeah. the, one, the one that I did that he'd probably remember would be The Rising Force. Uh, he probably read that. and then uh, He probably did. And then the, the series got taken over by another uh, another author. I was asked to do that, and then they asked me to do some other things for Star Wars and the um, some little game books and stuff. And and those are very popular too, but they're not as widely distributed. Well, yeah, he's 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 read everything about Star Wars. And well, our main reason books. for having you on today, Dave, is is to encourage local authors to take that bite that bullet. If it, if it's a hard one to swallow, then then you know be careful. We don't want to spend your money on something. But this is a great investment in yourself. Take that flight out to L.A., go to, the, go to Hollywood and sit for two days with, with Dave and, and the others on the panel and be part of a workshop that you will leave as a better writer. Yeah. Um, it's an honor to meet them. And, and give you a heads up. I mean, Dave is one of the judges, so yeah. know you what he's, he'll show you what he's looking for. I'm, I'm the first reader, so, uh, so I'm the, the biggest and baddest of the judges. <laughs> is that right? You're the first one. Wow. Yeah, so, if it doesn't so get past you, it doesn't go anywhere. Exactly. I have to recommend the finalists to the other judges, and and uh, and then they they go through. The panel of judges goes through and looks at them. So we've yeah. had we've had at least one winner from down here, and not too far from yeah, us. The villages, yeah. Do you remember the Can't man's remember name? His name? Yeah, he came into the studio. He showed us a video of himself at the award ceremony, and mm -hmm. I, I just I apologize if he's listening. I forgot your name. 
<laughs> My son will be thrilled knowing I spoke to you because he's read all of those Star Wars books. Well, thank you so much. Dave Wolverton, thank you for being on the air with us today. Um, and come back anytime. Okay, I appreciate it. August 29th and August 30th. The website is writersofthefuture.com. And uh, call us if you need any of that information repeated. Thank you, Dave. Okay, thank you. We'll be right Bye. back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. The vote unanimous. The UN Security Council endorsing the Iran nuclear deal. U.S. Ambassador to the UN, Samantha Powers, says...